SpaceX preps for major Starship activities, Starlink continues to dominate the heavens, Dragon rides out Hurricane Ian, and we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin, and this is SpaceX in the News. Since last week's busy days of testing, SpaceX has been focused more on behind-the-scenes efforts to prepare for future Starship Super Heavy stacking at the pad, followed soon after by a 33-inch in static fire. So no road closures have been on the books recently, but expect that to change in the near future. They've also been spending their time building up the fleet. RGV Aerial Photography shared recent footage from the air of what was Massey's gun range, but is now and has been for a while, SpaceX's future test tank testing location. Conveniently tucked away from public access right along the Rio and Mexican border. Check out and support RGV using his link below. Since Starship update this week, although we'll briefly revisit the topic in a moment, but meow moving along to Starlink. On Saturday evening, SpaceX hoisted 52 Starlink satellites to low Earth orbit from Slick 40 at Cape Canaveral. This was the fourth flight for this Falcon 9 first stage, landing safely on a shortfall of Gravitas, chilling on the Atlantic. My appreciation goes out to those of you who joined me on Rumble for the viewing experience. During our live stream, I briefly mentioned how SpaceX had in the past shared video from a fairing's perspective while re-entering the atmosphere, but that it may be hard to find since it was so long ago. Well, Elon had our six sharing an onboard still taken from one of this mission's fairing cams during re-entry. So for those of you who were curious, there you go. Thanks, Elon. He also twatted that SpaceX is now delivering about twice as much payload to orbit than the rest of the world combined, more than four times that of China. And Starlink itself now has over 1 million user terminals manufactured. Back off, I already called dibs on one of them eight months ago. No offense, Europe, you won't need them as you head into blackouts this winter. Unless, of course, you're on a boat. During Hurricane Ian, Elon reminded everyone that Starlink's maritime package enables high-speed internet connectivity even in heavy seas with 280 click per hour winds. So you can stream Wolf of Wall Street on your yacht while you sink it like the Titanic. I will not die sober! Ian, which of course made landfall Wednesday as a Category 4 on Florida's southwest coast, is the reason SpaceX and NASA battened down the hatches at their Cape facilities and pushed Dragon's Crew 5 launch date back a couple days to October 5th. We'll stream it live on the tubes, so be sure to subscribe and ring that bell, brah. Even better, join our Locals page for free to receive email notifications before every launch. According to NASA's own Steve Stitch and SpaceX's highly reputable Gerstenmeier, the two entities are moving forward with building out crew and cargo Dragon launch capabilities at Slick 40. Reuters broke the news back in June that SpaceX was looking to do this because they're planning on launching and catching Starship Super Heavy rockets near Pad 39A, hence the tower they're building, which is right next to the extremely valuable crew tower. So it would be wise to have a backup location to launch cargo and crew from in case, well, you know, Starship is caught by the wrong tower, so to speak. Gersh said the second crew tower at Slick 40 will be operational by the time Starship launches from 39A. Yesterday, NASA and SpaceX announced an unfunded joint effort to study the feasibility of a SpaceX and Players program idea to boost the agency's Hubble Space Telescope into a higher orbit with the Dragon spacecraft at no cost to you and I, the taxpayer. Quote, teams expect the study to take up to six months, collecting technical data from both Hubble and the SpaceX Dragon spacecraft. This data will help determine whether it would be possible to safely rendezvous, dock, and move the telescope into a more stable orbit. So this could end up becoming the primary objective for the Players Program's second mission. But now it's time for today's honorable mention. Back on November 23rd, SpaceX launched a Falcon 9 from Vandenberg Space Force Base, California, carrying NASA's double asteroid redirection test. Come on, you knew this was coming. This was humanity's first ever planetary defense mission to knock an asteroid off course, but to be clear, the targeted asteroids poise no threat to Earth. The larger of the two, Didymos, is orbited by a smaller moonlet, Dimorphos, that is just 160 meters in diameter. It took DART 10 months to intercept the pair of space rocks 11 million clicks downrange, traveling 6.5 clicks per second upon impact at 7.14 p.m. Eastern on September 26th, hitting just 17 meters off center according to initial data. And we have an impact. We the for humanity in the name of planetary defense. NASA and APL's post-mission brief came with some high-resolution imagery along with a little irony. We also have incredible high-resolution imagery from DART's Draco camera. And some info on what is to be expected, Meow. But what we're going to be seeing probably in the next couple of months, we're actually going to get a confirmation of exact uh, period change that we made. So it's not going to be tomorrow, I'm sorry, but it is going, we might see some 
uh, Leech and Cube CubeSat images coming up in the next day or two. To confirm the strategy is effective, the data just needs to show a change in speed in Dimorphos's orbit around Didymos since Earth 2 is constantly moving on its own path through space. However, taking precise measurements is one of the primary purposes of the full-scale test. Well, that's all for today. Congrats for making it to the end. Much love for everyone supporting the show, and have a nominal weekend. Till next time, Godspeed.